Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week so far. We got a lot to get to today. All different little things, things I have to get off my phone and whatnot. Uh, first, I want to start off with, uh, you know, I was doing my steps last week. And the whole reason I started doing these steps is I have a, uh, a male lady, a uh, postal worker, letter carrier, who, uh, who's who been, you know, my male lady for many years now. And she's uh, getting a little bit older and I could see... When she goes up and down the steps, you know, I know she's starting to feel it in her knees. You could see it. She wears knee wraps, and, you know, that's a big thing to go with letter carriers, their knees, their hips, you know, and we have a long route here, too. So I felt kind of bad, and I wanted, to, I, I had two choices. I could take my mailbox, and I could put it down to ground level off the porch, but the problem with that is then every package that comes, UPS and everything else, they stick under the mailbox, and it'll be exposed to the weather. So that was a no-go. So that's why I said I'll put on those uh, steps, those stronger steps. And I wanted to get a railing for her. And for myself, too. I'm not getting any younger. And a railing is always nice to have, you know. So I, I was going to bend some pipe and, and do that and make it home. But I said, let me just look before I do it. And I looked on Amazon. And I found they have railing kits. And uh, I looked at a few. And I said, well, this is the one for me. And boy, was I pleasantly surprised by the quality of this railing kit. And uh, and and another thing I was surprised at was the, uh, the hardware that came with it. Let me show you. So the nice surprise was, look at the hardware that came with that uh, railing kit. And this is just the extra. You know, it came with uh, enough leg bolts to do it. It uses eight. It came with, I think, ten. Uh, it came with extra. This is what attaches the... Uh, the railing to the uh, upright posts came with an extra one of those came with a hex wrench and i know it's this is definite chineseium but you know what the fact that they included it i i like that that's very nice and it came with some expansion bolts um that you can use if you were drilling into cement to expand it i just you know very happy with the purchase and i think that was a uh it was nice that they do include extra although sometimes you get a little paranoid right when you get extra parts you're like did i forget something but in this case you knew there was extra uh so it's always nice to be pleasantly surprised isn't it when you buy something like that um uh, next up uh last weekend the weekend had just passed i went to elephant's trunk flea market again what a great time i had love that place it was a little bit cooler as it's starting to get now, and uh, it, it's just a lot of, I like the interesting stuff to see. I'll show you, I picked up a couple really cool things, but uh, one thing I picked up, I, you know, wanted to put a couple of uh, spruce trees to replace the trees I had to cut down, and uh, I, I was looking at Norway spruce, seems to be a real nice looking tree, and, and this guy at the flea market had these beautiful trees there. They were $75 each, almost four feet tall. Let me show you what they okay, look like. Okay, I picked up a couple of beautiful Norway spruces. These are great trees from the flea market you go to. And uh, you know my little weed garden over here, right? <laughs> Let me show you something interesting about why a, a weed garden is so interesting. Now down here at the bottom of my weed garden, look, look what I got growing. I got cherry tomatoes growing in my weed garden a couple plants a couple tomato plants so i wonder who planted that but i'm gonna have me some cherry tomatoes right now and here they are all planted and uh, watered and 50 years to be 50 feet tall i won't be here i absolutely love evergreens always have ever since i was a kid there's something about an evergreen tree or a pine tree a spruce tree i just love them i love the smell of them i love the way they look Always have. So I'm um, looking forward to those to get a little bit higher up. Um, next up, uh, you remember uh, about a week ago or something, we picked up that nice Black & Decker drill. Let's, uh, let me show you something about Okay, that. you remember last week we picked up this nice Black & Do uh, Black & Decker drill. Couple things about this uh, that we want to talk about. First of all, uh, the cord, you know, I, I got to do a quick repair on the cord and that that I, I'm going to restore this, but I got a lot of other things to do first. In fact, I got a really nice drill that my buddy Abe Elias sent me from Canada I want to do before this, but I just want to do a clean up and then store it away again, not restoring it and uh, and fix the cord so that's still usable. And also I'd like to check the RPM. This says 2,500 RPM. The way it was spinning, it seemed very low. And I don't know if there's a low and a high speed on here. I don't think so. But 
let's uh, let's clean it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Remember, see the cord here starting to come apart against it. Let's do a little okay, quick. The first thing you have to do, we unscrewed these screws here. This is the old style plug. We pulled the plug out of here. And you can see here why, uh, again, we're gonna put new plug, we're gonna put, you know, redo this eventually, but right now we're just doing it as a cleanup that if you had to use it, uh, it wouldn't be so dangerous. Now you can see here what happens, you get some oxidation always on the wires and stuff. So we're gonna cut this back a little bit. We're gonna clean, you also get some rust on these plugs. Again, we're gonna replace it, but you take off all, you see the rust that's in there. We're gonna clean up this plug. I already ran it over the wire brush on the top here, but we're gonna clean that up. We're gonna cut this back. We're gonna expose some new wires because these get bent around. And uh, and we'll put this back on the plug with a little bit of heat shrink to uh, to go the interface between the cord. Now and we're gonna cord. cut off this end, but it's always nice every once in a while. Here we have it, channel lock, and you don't see these too often. You don't get to use them. And they're the 911 series. You see that here? And these are cable cutters and they're made just for this. And you can see how that works. And uh, again, we don't get the chance to use these that often, but when you do, it's always a nice way to, uh, to get a nice clean cut with some cable and uh, a beautiful tool, rarely used, but it's always enjoyable when you do. Now, use. never assume the condition of a cord by the ends that you are exposed, because you can see here, you look at this, you see that the... The, the outside is starting to feel a little bit stiff and cracking, and you say, well, that cord's shot. But all we did was cut just below this rubber. Now, this is wrapped and sealed, almost hermetically sealed. Now, look at this. This is the cord we exposed. It is supple. It is beautiful. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it, no cracks whatsoever. So never assume the, the length of the cord by just the end that's been exposed to God knows Okay, what. using a Dremel, some Q-tips, we got all the rust off our plug, we straighten out the prongs, everything looks good now. Now we're going to feed the cord through and, uh, and wrap it our new cord attached. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide some heat shrink. And this is a heavy duty heat shrink, it's a much thicker wall. We're gonna slide this up around it to give added protection from this cord so it don't uh, walk and off One thing I'd like to do before I put any heat shrink on, I always put a little tape on there, again, to uh, reinforce it. Now this uh, high heavy duty heat shrink will go up around here and it just makes, because this always takes a lot of bending and, and they always give you problems up there. Okay, now, like I said, I'm just doing a quick cleanup on the drill. To do a cleanup on the drill, I'm using nothing other than my 50-50. And, and the, the important thing to remember when you're dealing with the 50, which is half acetone, half automatic transmission fluid. The important thing to remember is don't be stingy with the 50-50. Now, you can see here, we put a, a nice little uh, a section here. We got a very soft wire brush, very soft. And you could also use a brass brush. But uh, you can see, and there's a lot of dirt that gets into those grooves and everything like that. But uh, this is, again, a very soft wire brush. You could use a toothbrush. Let the 50-50 do the work. Get in here. And again, like I said, this is just a cleaning. We're not doing this as a, a restoration or anything. But get all that dirt out of the grips and everything. And you can see when you wipe it, take a, a rag, you wipe it off. And you can see what happens. You do it once or twice. Look at all that grunge and dirt that's trapped in there. You do it a couple times until everything's out. We're going to do the whole drill. Okay, now that. one problem you're going to run into always is you're going to have dirt, grime, grease that gets around all these little indents here. And you can't just leave that there. So what you do is the best way to do is take an old ice cream stick or any piece of wood like that. Split it down the middle like this. Just split it down the middle and uh, and take that and when it splits down the middle here you'll have a little piece of it like this here an edge that you can trim out with your exacto or utility knife trim it out and now you have a soft stick that you can get in here get this grease out of here without damaging any of the aluminum casing that's a cast aluminum casing and uh, and get it in there you can also take a rag or a piece of rag wrap it around the edge of here and again using the 50 50 which you're not stingy with, you can get in here and you can you can see how easy and quickly it loosens up that dirt and that stuck on grime. And that's how you get rid of there without any scratches or anything like that. Again, that's the if you can't get your brass brush or your toothbrush in there and then finish it off 
with good old fashioned Q-tips. Okay, we're coming along nicely now. Uh, we get we see we're missing a screw here. And there's a good chance that when you have two that are on opposite size that they're the same size. So we're going to pull this out and see what size that is. And hopefully it looks like a button head and I think we have it. Now I'm almost positive I have it, but for me to fish through all these and it's, I believe it's an eight by 24 threads per inch, which is a kind of an unusual size. And I do have a, uh, a larger uh, a screw head, but uh, now what's nice about having a lathe is we'll just take it over to the lathe and turn the diameter of the head down a little bit and uh, That'll give us a screw to uh, to work. Yeah, okay, there we go exactly uh, about two minutes on the lathe Reason number 3,500 to get a Next lathe. Next up we got to address this chuck and this is a keyless type chuck and uh, We'll just clean this up, but it's very rare to see a keyless chuck on a lot of these older drills now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this old Black & Decker drill looked like before we started. Okay, we're calling this project done for now. This, again, this is just a cleanup. And the reason I did this, because a lot of you people out there like to uh, flip things on eBay and things like that. You buy a tool. And my buddy Phil from uh, Elephant Trunk Flea Market, you got to stop by there and see him. He gets stuff, but he's smart. You see, if he buys something for $2, he sells it for 3 He don't try and make a killing on it, and he does better business than half the vendors there. Um, remember, we did this extension last week, Scott's extension, and look at the nice finish on there. Remember, you know, I, I don't always take things down to shine. You know, sometimes I like them somewhat original, like this finish here. It's a war finish, but that's what I did. I actually like this finish on here. It's cleaned up. It's not, sh you could shine it up, but it'll kind of look on you odd because they didn't come that way from the factory. Uh, I said before, I said cast aluminum. It might be magnesium, this housing. I don't know. But let's take a look at what we did. The nameplates, obviously. Look how beautiful they are, right? And uh, now, I first saw this drill on uh, my buddy John Fix. Now, John Fix did one of these, did a fantastic job. You want to see one restored. I'll put a link in the description. But John sent me, when he saw me uh, pull this drill out and, and working on it, because he did one, he said, I was cringing every time you turned it on because these uh, don't have a grounded plug. And you can see here what we did with the plug. We cleaned it up, cleaned up the line. But... Uh, they didn't come with a grounded plug and because of that, you know, and I've heard stories, although I've, I've been working with metal drills my whole life, never, thank God, got shocked. They're going to knock on wood here. But, um, you know, what happens is, you know, you can because this can become alive. And, you know, here in the States, we have 110 and I've been shocked a lot. But, you know, but you, you got to take chances. So what John did is he sent me and John used to deal in extension cords years ago, but he sent me, look at this nice thing that John sent. He said, I don't want to see you get electrocuted. Uh, it's a, uh, a GFCI. It's a ground fault circuit interrupter. And, and what these do is you plug it in, obviously, to the wall. And then you plug your appliance into here, okay? Now, what's beautiful about the GFCI circuits, you know, you see them a lot in bathrooms and things like that of any newer construction. In my house, I don't have any because 100 years old. But... Uh, and what happens if you bring an appliance or something into the bathroom, you know, years ago, you had to be careful because you can get electrocuted. But now the GFCI circuit senses any disturbance in the balance between the voltage coming in and going out. And if it within a couple milliamps, if it notices that there's a, a, a imbalance, it shuts the circuit off and it has a reset right here. You know, so you don't have to go down the basement and you flip the circuit breaker, you hit the reset, and you can also test it every once in a while. It has a light to show you it's working. Fantastic thing to have, especially if you're working with any older equipment like drills and things like that. So, John, thank you so much for sending that over. Uh, let's uh, try this out again. Look at how we did here. We did a, a nice cleanup on the whole drill, right? It just has that nice finish and, you know, took all the dirt, did the, the chuck, did the chuck right on the drill. Didn't take it off. Look how smooth that is. The beauty about using 50-50 to clean up is you don't have to worry about any 50-50 getting in there because uh, the uh, uh, acetone evaporates quick and the training fluid is always a good lubricant for anything. Uh, over here we have, this is a lock to lock the, sp the uh, spindle so that you can, you know, do the chuck here. You can also hold the base like this, so either way, but that's a, uh, a spindle lock. And uh, the switch here now, uh, it says on, on. Some people were telling me that you can, if you go halfway down, it'll turn it on. But if you go all the way on, it'll lock it on. 
I think my switch is a little worn because I can only get it to work the one way. So let's plug it in and uh, let me show you how this beautiful uh, baby operates. And then we'll take an RPM setting because I'm telling you, it says 2500 RPM. No way that's spinning 2500 RPM. So let's drill something with now, it. Here we have works. John's GFCI plugged into the outlet and we have the uh, drill plugged into the other side. Now I'm going to test it and you'll see there's a little orange indicator here. Listen to the, the relay. Okay, that's just, you saw the orange light cut off and it, the, it, it, uh, it stopped the circuit. So now we'll hit reset. Okay, we have the orange light again. It's good to go. Let's try Okay, it. we're going to drill right through this just to check. I, I mounted a uh, uh, quarter inch bit in here and you can listen. Now I'm going to click it on. It'll stay on until we click it again. There you go, real hot. Real workhorse, you can feel the torque. There's a lot of torque in these old drills, you know. Okay, here's the setup. We have our vintage General Radio Company strobo tack set up, and we're going to set it to about 2,500. Now, I'm going to zoom you in, but keep an eye on the chuck. Remember that little hole there, and once we get that steady, I'll be able to see what the speed is. We're going to set it, and we'll see at 2,500, see how close okay, it is. Okay, we set it 2,500. It should start flashing any moment now. When it does, we'll turn the drill on. Okay, now obviously the drill's not on. Now we're going to turn it on and see. Remember, look at that hole right there. Well, to my surprise and chagrin, it, uh, it, it is indeed over 2,500 RPM. Now, uh, I, I, it said here about 2,800, but I don't, I didn't uh, calibrate my, uh, strobe attack in a while. I got to calibrate it to make sure to, if I wanted to know the exact number, but I just was in the ballpark. I, I couldn't believe it. it is running at that speed. And, uh, I guess with all the lubrication and the, uh, maybe some of the 50-50 that got it, it's running fast, running strong. And the thing is that with brush motors, sometimes it, uh, it does creep a little up or down in RPMs. It's not as exact as some other motors. So you could, so you saw that creeping a little bit, but it was within that range and very exciting and fun to play with. Anyway. Hope you had a, uh, enjoyed this episode today. A little bit of a cleanup, a little bit just to show you that drill in action. Check out John Fix's restoration of this uh, type of drill. I'll have a link in the description. And thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.